After four years, Tesla finally had its delivery event for the Cybertruck. The event was very light on details. Those came later online. Pricing, performance, measurements, range, with and without the range extender. Range extender? Oh, we need to talk about that. We know that GM's trucks can be configured to get 400 miles of range or more. We've been told that the Ram Rev will offer 500 miles of range. Both of those trucks have more than 200 kilowatt hours of battery to achieve this. In the original video released just shortly after the delivery event, I told you about a Ford patent for a gasoline powered range extender mounted in the back of an electric pickup. There is no indication that Ford is committed to do this, but they at least thought about it and patented it. More importantly, Rivian applied to patent an electric vehicle with modular removable auxiliary battery with integrated cooling, and their patent was accepted, but only after some revision. According to an investigation article by patent attorney Smith and Hoppin, I'll put a link to that in the notes, Rivian's patent was approved through use of something called an inventive hook. Basically, a removable battery in an electronic device was not seen as being truly unique. A patent needs to be something unique. For example, you can buy a case for your phone that adds battery capacity. Rivian successfully argued that the integrated cooling is the unique element of their design. Their proposal is for an add-on battery that does not use the same battery cooling system as the main drive battery of the truck. So what does Tesla do about this? Well, they could work around that integrated cooling component and then argue that the rest of the patent is just derivative, invent not inventive. Would Tesla cool their battery module, their range extender, using the same cooling system as the main battery in the Cybertruck? Possibly. Would they dare not cool the battery? That seems like a bad idea. Alternatively, Tesla could just negotiate with Rivian. I can tell you that automakers run into patent issues frequently with its competitors, and they just come together and trade rights to them or come up with some kind of settlement. You know, maybe when Tesla and Rivian were talking about use of Tesla's Nax plug, they address this, but that's purely speculation. Or maybe Tesla never actually does this range extender, and this is just a way to get close to that 500 miles of range like Elon said they would, and it never sees the light of day. Tesla typically doesn't disclose battery capacity, but in this case they did to numerous media outlets. They said it's 123 kilowatt hours that delivers that 340 miles of estimated EPA range in the dual motor model. If you use that as a guide, I would expect that this extra module, this range extender, would have to be about 47 kilowatt hours in order to deliver that 130 miles of additional range. Using a cell density for the 4680 cell of 244 watt hours per kilogram, that gets you to almost 200 kilograms of just battery. So that's 425 pounds. How much would a complete module weigh then when you add an enclosure, the structure of it, wiring, battery management? Again, does it have to have its own integrated cooling or is it tied to the vehicle's cooling system? 600 or more pounds, maybe even close to 900 pounds seems like a reasonable range. And, you know, for comparison, that's like twice the weight of a refrigerator. This is not the kind of thing you're just going to take by yourself and put into the truck. So how does it get added? Well, likely it would get added at delivery. So if you're at the sales uh, place where you're picking up your Cybertruck, you could ask to add this component as an add-on. So it doesn't go against the base price of the vehicle. It would be treated as more of an accessory to keep it below the $80,000 and qualify for the federal incentive. The dealer would have to install it. I can't see how somebody would do this themselves just because of the weight and the complexity. This is a high voltage system that you would be plugging in. That's not the kind of thing you want to do without the right protective equipment. Now, could you rent this from the service department? You know, if you do have to tow a truck or something like that or go on a long range, could you order this and say, I need this for this week? You go to your Tesla service center, they install it, and off you go for a week, and then you come back, they uninstall it, and it goes into somebody else's truck. That's, a, that's an interesting business opportunity for Tesla. Now, how much will this cost? If you look at 
a battery price of, let's say, $115 per kilowatt hour. That's, that's kind of where the industry is right now. And again, Tesla probably has better pricing because they've been able to scale up so well. That leads to over $5,000 just for the cost of the batteries. When you add the enclosure, the wiring, all that other components, the cost to Tesla is, let's say it's $8,000 or more. There's speculation online that this could be a $16,000 option, and I wouldn't be surprised by that. First of all, I don't think Tesla wants people to order this too much or buy too many of them, and it's going to be problematic to install and require effort. So given the cost, given the fact that it's going to take up about a third of the bed, and given the fact that it's going to eat into your payload capacity, which we'll talk about in a minute, this is quite an expensive option to gain that extra mileage. Here's what we were told about the dual motor version of Cybertruck back in 2019. I guess it doesn't matter now. Here's what we know about Cybertruck now compared to some of its competitors. Now the Silverado EV, I show just some limited information because the mainstream dual motor LT trim, we don't have details on. I'll talk about the RST and the work truck in just a little bit. Starting at the bottom, there's the price. 79990 keeps it below the $80,000 mark and qualifies it presumably for the federal incentive. Now in 2024, that goes from a tax credit to taking off the price of the vehicle at the transaction point. So that will be important, assuming it meets the battery and mineral requirements to get that funding. That'll be a huge benefit for these trucks. Now I did mention that if you want full self-driving, as a purchase, it would take it over that, but you can use it as a subscription or you can buy it as a subscription, which would not count against it. We don't know if the wrap will count against the price of the truck and put it over $80,000 if you want to get one of those from Tesla, or is that considered an accessory, something that's added on after the transaction is made? We'll have to see, but getting $7,500 off, assuming they meet the income requirements the buyer does, that's a huge benefit on these trucks. Max payload is better than what we know of its competitors. So that's huge. I mean, that's that's important. People do look at that. So good on them. Max towing is a little bit better than what we know of the Silverado and the Ford. Chevrolet will offer a max tow package of 20,000 pounds. That's coming later. We don't know which trim levels will offer that, but it will exceed that number. And Ram Rev, I don't show that on the chart because it's still a year away from production. That's said to have 14,000 pounds towing. They did have a really good demonstration during the delivery event showing video of it doing a tractor pull, which, which is a really fun event if you've ever seen one. And it does better than its current competitors in the market. And it actually did better than a Ford F-350 diesel single rear wheel. That was a, a really good demonstration, good on them. Other things during the show, like gently tossing a baseball at the yeah. side window, Great. not so much. They did reveal power numbers for this truck. Now, the torque number must be the torque at the wheel. It's just way in excess of the other trucks, and that's just how they're measuring it. Now, range is the key thing. When this truck was revealed, they said it's going to have 300 plus miles, and it delivered on that. Here's what we were told about the tri-motor top-of-the-line version of Cybertruck back in 2019, and here's what we know about it now. The biggest difference is it does not deliver on that 500-plus miles of range unless you get this range extender. Just under $100,000 in price. Quite honestly, they could have thrown another $10,000 on this thing, and people will still buy it. It's just that unique of a vehicle. Acceleration is a little bit better than its peers, more in line with the Rivian R1T quad motor. That's a that's a beast of a vehicle. So suffice it to say, all these pickup trucks are just kind of ridiculously fast and powerful. It's really more in line with what we know of the GMC Hummer EV. So let's take a look at those specs. Yes, the Hummer EV has gobs of horsepower and torque. And again, the Cybertruck Cyber Beast, I think that's a cool name. Uh, there we torque is measured at the wheel, not at the motor. Finally, we have the rear wheel drive single motor version of Cybertruck. And here's how it stacks up against the known competition. And nothing really jumps out at you as being, wow, this is the truck to get. It's going to be available in 2025. So that's a long ways from now. 
and expect the market to change, both in terms of pricing and its competition. Now, this is the most affordable Cybertruck, so that's a good thing, but it doesn't really have the specs that I would expect. 250 miles of range, some people say, oh, that's terrible. I think that's completely livable if it charges well, and that's an interesting point. Yes, Tesla has the supercharger network, which is great. By 2025, there are going to be more non-Tesla vehicles able to use that network as they've agreed to switch over to the NAX. For Tesla, a peak of 250 kilowatt charging is not impressive. Now, in other reviews that have been posted online since the delivery event, there is mention that a higher rate is coming. A couple of things need to happen. First of all, Tesla needs to build out its V4 hardware in North America. Some of the early deployments look like they're just going to have the V4 dispenser, but the power cabinet is not being upgraded. So there needs to be some additional work and build out of the network, and that's going to take a long time. Additionally, there's been some questions about the 4680 cells as far as their ability to charge that quickly. So I guess if you buy a Tesla Cybertruck, you're just going to have to trust Elon that this thing will charge faster in the future. We got details on the Cybertruck. There are some delivered, a handful delivered, and more coming in 2024. So I hope you like this video, particularly the deep dive into that range extender. That one caught me off guard, but it does give Tesla the bragging rights to say, oh yeah, we get almost 500 miles like some of these other trucks too. And it does so in a way that doesn't burn more gasoline. So good on them. Thanks for watching.